We've been on the road now for almost two years, living completely off grid. And for this van that we just built out, we installed an awesome electrical system that allows us to work from absolutely anywhere for long periods of time. Literally anywhere. I mean, look at this. This is where we've been for the past week and it's all made possible from our electrical system. So in this video, I wanna show you how we installed this electrical system and how you and any DIYer at home can too. No confusing technical talk and everything you see me talk about and show you today is in our full DIY van build guide, which you can find in the description below. In the guide, it has diagrams, the whole parts list, everything you need to recreate the electrical system you're gonna see now. Today is a very exciting day. We are installing all the electrical. So as you can see, we have not cheaped out on this one. We have all Victron components, the killer Dakota Lithium 200 amp hour batteries. We've got three of those. So my idea is to have the whole electrical closet on this side. So I'm gonna get all the components hung and then I'll show you how I'm wiring everything together and talk you through the system at the end. Cue the time lapse. Everything is now mounted. I guess I'll just point it all out before I throw a bunch of wires in here. So obviously the batteries, there's one more I just took out for ease of install. This is the solar charge controller. We've got a 150-60. The Lynx distributor, which basically in here, all this is, is the positive and negative bus bars. So you can have all of your fuses from your positive and negative bus bar, all in one unit, it's just really clean. This shut off switch, which will go from the battery to the Lynx distributor. Our inverter, so we've gone with the 3000. A little breaker for the solar cables that come in from the solar panels. And then the DC to DC charger, which will go through the floor and connect to the alternator batteries. So now it's just a case of connecting all these together. So a lot of cutting wires, crimping wires, make it look really neat. Here we go. I'm at a point now where it's like a good little break in the electrical to kind of explain a few things, show you where I'm at before I completely finish it so you can see the process a little bit better. So right here, I'm wiring up the panel. So it basically just has two in one. So the 12 volt is all up here and then the 120 is all this bottom section. Ignore the yellow ones for the minute. Let's concentrate on this wire that's coming in. So this is a six gauge wire that comes from the output of the inverter. So this chunky wire here. So the output of the inverter comes, feeds this panel, comes into the panel here, and then this black wire goes into a 30 amp um, fuse, because our system's 30 amp, not 50 amp. The white goes to the neutral bar of the panel, and then the green goes to the ground bar of the panel. And then these three 120 um, four, sorry, 120 circuits. We got each get their own breaker. So that is what I'm working on now is attaching these 120 wires into the their breakers. But I really like this system. Instead of having a separate fuse box for the 12 volt and then for the 120, it's all in one cute looking thing. And then it has a cover that goes on it. It's just really neat. I mean, look how neat this 12 volt wiring looks. 
12 volt wiring is really simple the positives on the top here's where you'll put all your fuses and then all your negatives go to this bus bar here this black wire is from the negative of the battery and then this red wire is from the positive of the battery so really liking how the system's turning out the inverter is all wired up it looks very complex but really all it is is this is coming from the positive of the batteries negative of the batteries this wire is from the shore plug and then this wire goes to the the AC breaker panel that I just showed you. So I'm gonna keep working on wiring all this mess up and then I'll talk you through the whole system. See you in a minute. All right, I pretty much got everything wired up just made my last cable so now all there is to do is add the fuses turn it on and then try and configure all these Victron components to work a few moments later all right all the fuses are in I think it's time to turn on the system let's do it okay here she is the finished product all right here we go I'm gonna turn this switch Power will be live. Three, two, one. Ooh, three, two, one. Wait, which way? This way. Three, two, one. A little spark. Everything should now be on. So can I turn the inverter on? So that turned on. This USB is on. We did it, guys. Good job. So I'm going to go ahead and talk you through each component from kind of the, the beginning of the system to the end. Obviously the base of the system is the batteries themselves. So we have the three batteries there, each 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries from Dakota Lithium. Honestly, the best batteries, love them. So I have the negative of this battery and then the positive of this battery goes and feeds the system. So this is how they're connected. I love my little diagrams. So from the positive terminal of this battery, it goes through an A and L fuse. This is 400 amps. And then following the fuse, it hits the master switch. So this, the system is now on, the system is now off. This switch completely shuts off all power going to the system coming from the batteries. From the switch, it then goes to the Lynx distributor. All this is, is the positive and negative bus bars are housed in this unit. Um, let me open it up and we'll have a look inside. All it has is just two screws. The front plate simply comes off. Now this may look complex, but it's very simple. So you've obviously got the positive coming in from the batteries. This feeds this whole top bus bar is what it's called. Then off the bus bar, you put all your fuses. So these are all fused to go into different um, components. And then these red wires on the bottom are going to the components themselves off the negative side the negatives are all behind here you can't really see too good I guess you can you can see the lugs all behind so the negative coming from this one is behind the positive same on all of them so basically all this is is a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar and then this is where you can house all your fuses so it's all in one place really neat so then let's jump back to the batteries and off the negative of the last battery it comes up and then it goes through this smart shunt so the smart shunt connects to the Victron app on my phone and it basically monitors the whole system so it can tell me how many hours I can run stuff until the batteries will be dead what volts the batteries are sitting at how much power I'm using how much power I'm bringing in through solar all those different things so it goes through this smart shunt and then connects to the negative bus bar. Let me put this back on, just for illustration purposes. One handed, nice. From the Lynx distributor, AKA the bus bars, it then feeds all different components off of that. Here it feeds the MPPT, it feeds the inverter, and also feeds the DC to DC charger right down there. It also feeds DC breaker panel. So let's talk about wire gauges real quick. All of my battery cables are 4O cables. 
They're super thick because they're going to be carrying a lot of amps. Depending on which component is going off of the Lynx distributor, it depends on the gauge of wire. So this chunky monkey is going to the inverter. So this is 4.0 wire. And then everything else is either 6 gauge or 10 gauge wire. Thinner ones are 10. Then the little thicker than the 10 is obviously the 6. So off of the MPPT, this is our solar charge controller. It goes through this little um, breaker so I can shut off and on the solar panels technically. So if I don't want any power coming in from the solar panels, I can flick this breaker to off and no power will come in. It's just a, like a safety feature. If you ever need to do maintenance on the panels, disconnect them, cut the wires, whatever, you can completely turn them off. And then also off of the Lynx distributor right here, I have the ground which connects all of the Victron components together and grounds the system. And then off of the actual negative, the first negative terminal on the negative bus bar, this goes through the floor and attaches to the chassis of the van, which I'll go show you right now. So right there you can see this is where the cable comes out of the van. This is 4.0 cable as well. Goes there and then it screws directly into the frame of the van itself. And this grounds the whole system out. And one thing about the van that I loved is all the pre-made bolt holes in the frame of the chassis. They're already threaded. So you just have to find the correct bolt, the correct size, and you can use the holes already pre-made in there from Ford. All right, back to the system. All right, so they're moving to the inverter itself. So this inverter can bring power in from the shore plug, which a lot of people will put on the outside of their vehicles, but I really didn't want to drill a hole. So I put my shore plug right here on this panel. So it's just a 30 amp socket. So then the 30 amp socket, when you get plugged in, this wire goes in to the inverter right here. And then the inverter takes that power and shoves it back into your batteries. Then this is 6.3 cable. This goes out of the inverter on the output side and feeds the 120 side of the system. So this thing here is our breaker panel. The bottom half of it is all 120 circuit and the top is all 12 volt circuits. So all of these wires are going to like my lights, my USB, toilet fans, anything that's 12 volt basically. And then these two is the positive and negative coming from the bus bars. You guessed it. So that, in summary, pretty much wraps up this system. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. So I know that's, that's a lot of me talking. I hope it made sense, but don't you worry, because I've made a little build guide for the whole van build and how you can build your own electrical, what components you need, what size gauges, what size fuses, all that kind of information. I will put a link in the description to that so you can go check that out and that, that kind of like gives it into more like bite-sized chunk consumable information, if that makes sense. But with that now all being installed, it's time to make it look like a spaceship. can use 